Hello and welcome to Tech with Heart. I am your host, Michelle Calloway, and Tech with Heart is all about empowering entrepreneurs to embrace technologies, systems, and strategies that will help them stay competitive in today's rapidly changing digital environment. And today's topic is how to create your market dominating position and why it's so important. And with me, I have a very special guest. His name is Jason Reed. He's basically a serial entrepreneur. He's done this many a time. So he really knows how to help small business owners avoid big mistakes. And so that's why we're going to be talking about market dominating position because you need to stand out from your competitors, folks. You really, really do. So he also, you know, helps small business owners. He has got very passionate about their success. And um, he's a chocolate chip cookie lover, just like me. So I'm thrilled to have Jason on the Tech with Heart stage. Please help me welcome him, Jason. Thank you very much, Michelle. I appreciate you having me on. Absolutely. I am thrilled that we're going to be talking about such an important topic um, when it comes to strategies. How important is a market dominating position? And can you explain what it is? Yeah, it, it's a core piece uh, of your business. And, you know, when I, I talk to companies uh, about it, uh, when a company uh, is or when when a consumer is looking at buying a product, they're making a decision and whether it's a product or service, how you differentiate yourself uh, is how that consumer is going to or why that consumer is going to choose you over your competitor. And so creating a market dominating position is that very fundamental key piece that uh, you as a business owner or as a business need to make sure that's in place. So the consumer chooses you over the other person. Okay, well, that makes perfect sense to me. I'm hoping it makes perfect sense to those that are listening. But go ahead and tell us a little bit more about how a small business owner can determine or define how what their market dominating position is. Yeah, so maybe it helped to give an example, and I'm sure this is uh, many people have heard this before, but if you think about, uh, you know, Domino's Pizza, they're a multi-billion dollar company uh, today. Uh, but when they were thinking about how do they differentiate themselves from anyone else, it's a pizza. There's lots of people that make pizzas out there, especially pizzas that come very quick. And so back many, many years ago, they really honed in on their target audience, which were hungry college students. And hungry college students wanted something very quickly they wanted it now so what they did is create this campaign and also their market dominating position was a hot ready pizza in 30 minutes less or it's free and so that's how they really differentiated themselves from anybody else in that market and then their secondary piece is they positioned themselves in that marketplace so they were able to serve those students that were hungry um, and we're able to get them the pizza on time and not have to um, obviously give, give, give the pizza away for free. And so, uh, you know, related to that, one of the core foundations of creating your market dominating position is really having to get into the mind of your buyer. And, and the very first piece you have to understand and want to understand is the buyer has a problem today that they don't want and you need to be able to provide a solution that they want and they don't have. So those are kind of the baby steps, this is the foundation of putting a market dominating position uh, in place. So you, you mentioned the Domino's, which was a great example, but I also know that Domino's has like a brick and mortar physical location. So positioning themselves uh, uh, around their competition by saying hot and ready within 30 minutes or it's free was a huge differentiator just in the the marketing but what about um the positioning for the the stores you have to you said you, they put it themselves near obviously the college campuses and whatnot but what about online business owners now can you talk a little bit about like a small business say like a business coach how can a business coach come up with their market dominating position when they're in a sea of other online business coaches? Yeah, so um, 
And I, I think we might uh, might be skipping ahead uh, with with the interview here, but there's there's a couple of different things, and I, I think one of the things that gets thrown out there a lot is a unique selling position, and a company or a coach or anybody has to have that uh, themselves. And what that is is how are you unique from anybody else out there? What do you think is unique about what you do? And so that's kind of that core foundation. And if you don't have a uniqueness, then you're a commodity. So first you have to understand what's unique about you. And that's an internal thing. It can be used external, but that's really a eternal thing. What, what widget do you do? What's technically better than something else? Then you take that. And then again, going back to that, that buyer, what, what is their hot button? What is it that gets them excited or frustrated or mad or whatnot? And it doesn't matter if you're a brick and mortar business or an online business, it's really getting into that buyer's mind. So you take your unique value proposition, what's special about you, and then you go and you look at externally, because what the what is that hot button? What is the potential prospect or the consumer? What is really driving them to purchase a product and then what is uniquely positioning you from the competition. So you have to have that unique selling position or proposition that's an internal thing. And then you take that externally and that's where the market dominating position comes uh, to, to fruition. And, and again, it doesn't matter if you're a brick and mortar or you're an online or something in between, you have to differentiate yourself from the competitors out there or there's no reason that they're gonna buy from, from you versus somebody else. Uh, thank you for mentioning the unique value proposition because I, I constantly am trying to encourage people to find their uniqueness and um, maybe you can talk to us a little bit about uh, any guidance or steps on how to, uh, like you said, it's an internal thing, but um, do you have any like questions that an entrepreneur should ask themselves like to help them come up with that differentiator? Yeah, I, I think it just, it starts with, uh, I mean, it kind of depends on where you're at and your business journey. But, uh, you know, for me, it's, it's like, who, who am I? Uh, and with tech with heart, we had this conversation yesterday, who are you and why are you doing this from a service perspective or even a product perspective? Um, and then if it's more of a, on a technical level, so if you're doing some things that are technical in nature, what is this, what does this thing do? That's so much better than somebody else. That's, you know, AI, does, does the, does the propeller spin faster to just use very generic terms? Does it, does it, does it make things speed up? Does it make things slow down? Whatever that uniqueness is, that's something you have to have a very serious conversation with your, with yourself or your team to really understand. And then the market dominating position is really that external thing where who your consumer is or prospect is, what is it that really that unique selling position you have solves a problem that they have. So that that's kind of the differentiator on those and, and how you kind of have to, to think through those things. And uh, it's, a, it's a lot to unpack in our, in our few minutes here, but that kind of gets maybe hopefully some, some wheels spinning as you start to think about how you not only position yourself, but how you think about your company um, in general. And again, whether that's a lawn business, a bakery, a technology online, um, you know, a shop a store online, any of those things, all those things are core important things that you have to have um, to run a business successfully. So um, the word unique keeps coming up. I was thinking while you're talking, you know, my marketing mentor talks about a unique mechanism too. So you are unique because of who you are and your years of experience and any uh, major credibility that you've built up, and then you can let somebody know what the value proposition of what you have to offer is, but you can also throw in that it's only through this unique mechanism, meaning this particular course that I've created that includes blah, 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 blah that you're going to be able to experience this transformation because of, you know, the fact that I've put this all together kind of for you in a way, right? Is that another thing to consider when you're talking about market dominating position is what is your unique thing like I think you mentioned it but I, I he, he calls it a unique mechanism yeah it, it, it's unique but I, I I hate to harp on it but it's you have to think what is unique in the terms of the person buying it because you might think it's really unique and interesting and I've done this through a, a, new, a, a number of tech companies that I've run and other offline companies too is I think it's really cool and interesting to myself 
um, and the people that you surround yourself may think that, but when you're thinking about who is the actual purchaser of your product or service, what makes that unique thing really stand out? What is that hot button? What is the thing that gets them to say, oh, this can make a difference or this is what's different to me? And I, I think what gets lost. And if you, if you go look at your value pack, um, your advertising, the stuff that comes in the mail or uh, many of the websites, you know, a lot of the things that you'll see is I'm the fastest. I've been doing this for 20 years. Uh, we work harder than somebody else. You know, all those things that, gosh, I hope you do. I hope you, you, you do these things. Um, I hope you're really, we're really smart at this. So those aren't really unique things. Those aren't really hitting buyers hot buttons. Those are just baseline sort of things. And I'll, I'll give another example. So I was talking to a physical therapist um, group the other day and what they were saying is, I asked them, you know, how do you present yourself? What's unique about your business? And how do, how do you, what do you tell your consumers or your prospects? And he's like, well, we've been in business for 20 years. And what you have to say is, well, who cares? Like, that's that's not what I care about a consumer. As a consumer, I care, if I have to go to physical therapy, I wanna know, or I think the other thing was, and we have licensed therapists. Well, again, I hope so. And it's great that you've been there for 20 years, but I wanna know that you're the best person out there that can get me through a process that I need so I don't hurt anymore or I can get done with this physical therapy faster to get back to my normal life. That's what's important to me, not that you've been there for 20 years. So those things like that, again, switching it, it's not about you, it's about them. Being able to do business online is crucial for survival, especially during times of social distancing. So how do you survive and thrive in the sea of digital noise? It's a lot like fishing. You need to know who your perfect customer is so that you could use the right kind of lure to attract them. We help you catch your perfect customer and retain them for future sales through highly converting websites, influencer mobile apps, getting you featured in the news and on TV. Hi, my name is Jerry Bowden, U.S. Army veteran and president of Revealio Software Solutions. Our goal is to help you rise above the competition be seen as an expert authority in your industry and embrace technology to stay competitive for long-term success. It's more affordable than you may think. So reach out to us at Revealio.com and together we will make your business come alive. Well, thanks for bringing that up because you're, you're so correct with that. We have to build our businesses around our our buyers and what the needs that are burning pain points that they're having that will actually get them to take an action because it's such a pain point that they want resolved and you you put the package it and position it properly through your market dominating position etc that they realize oh wow you know you should be able to in that positioning help them to quickly identify that you are indeed the one that they need to reach out to because of what you say in your market dominating position so you have a little questionnaire perhaps that you that you ask um, business owners when you coach them to go ask some of their clients. How do, how do they start get started with this? Identifying what those target markets pain points are and what, you know, what solutions they seek, et cetera. Yeah. So again, I think you got to start with yourself, understanding yourself. And then, um, yeah, I, I have some different questionnaires to th think about things, but there's 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 a quite a process. It doesn't have to be overwhelming, but it is a process. And what you want to do is make sure what you put in place is repeatable because processes are fine. They they become overwhelming, but if you make it so it's simple, uh, there's work to do, but it's a process and you wanna make it repeatable because you don't wanna do this all the time. You should have to do it all the time. There's there's adjustments to things over time, but it's a repeatable process that you want to do to move your buyers down you know, the path, down the buyer's journey, which is a whole different conversation we can have at, at another time. But um, yeah. Um, I think it's also, um, you know, as you, like you said, you, you don't have to redo this whole process every time, but you can modify it because oftentimes what you know, when you build your business, you have like a person or customer avatar in mind and you go and you build your whole business around that customer avatar, <clears throat> addressing pain points, 
uh, fulfilling needs, taking him to the promised land, etc. But you find out through the process of doing that, that holy smokes, I'm attracting that people with that pain point, but I'm attracting people with that pain point that are like really difficult to work with. So then you might want to like modify that market dominating position messaging to kind of weed out those, or, or at least def definitely create some sort of a, a vetting system so that you are getting the, the qualified kind of candidates to want to work with you or buy your product or whatever that are just like your dream client. You can work it out towards that so that you're just a happier entrepreneur because you're serving a need you're making lives, you know, better or whatnot, but your, your, your clients are just great to work with. What, what do you yeah. think about that? I'd say absolutely. And if you don't have one of these, you're already behind the times um, because the world has changed. It's continuing to change. And then once you have a market dominating position in place, um, competitors change, products change. AI, we've talked about, there's new products, there's new services, there's new solutions, let's just engulf them, coming to the market today. So you have to continually adapt your business to those, but hopefully your your core, your values, your market dominating position, your mission, those things can stay at a base level and hopefully stay and adjust a little bit, not your mission, hopefully, and not your uh, core values, but some of the market dominating position things can change because your competitors are changing too. If you have things that make you unique, um, the world is rapidly changing and that uniqueness might not be unique in a year or two or months, depending on what your business is. Yeah. So speaking of, I'm going to just talk about AI real quick and what's happening in 2023. It's just, everything's just getting flipped on its head because of open AI and chat GPT and just generational, or I think it's called generational AI. Anyway, it's it's mind blowing what it can do. And so there are a lot of people I'm already hearing that are losing their jobs that are what we call gig workers, where they would write copy or they would create video content or uh, graphical content for companies or even programmers themselves, like low hanging, like rent workers on the coding side are being replaced with artificial intelligence at a rapid rate. So my suggestion to you, if you are in that type of service industry that is going to be able to be done by a robot, either now or soon, within the next couple of years, start identifying what other human strengths you bring to the table that you can use to incorporate AI to make businesses want to hire you because you are using the latest and greatest of the tech tools to make things more efficient, um, more cost effective, but then you're also still that human touch because we can't lose sight of the need to have human involvement, even with AI, to make sure that we are indeed coming across properly, resonating properly. And um, and by the way, you should never just like take content that's been written by an AI bot and just verbatim copy and paste. Would never recommend that ever because we're, we're quickly identifying that bots are going to be being built to go out there and identify AI written content so that it will just null and void it. And then that's not what you're going to want. So you definitely need to show that you're embracing this rather than fearful of it, that it's going to replace you. Start figuring out what your unique differentiator is with it and position yourself as a market dominating um, you know, service provider with the AI tools that are rolling out. That's my recommendation. What do you think, Jason? I, I absolutely agree. Um, you know, like we just talked about, time, times are changing. Uh, AI, chat GPT is, is a really interesting and great thing. Um, and utilize it. Use it as something that helps support you in your mission and in, in your market dominating position. It is a tool. It, it's an arrow in the quiver. It's not it's not the bow, at least at this point. Uh, it's not the quiver. It's not you. Someone still has to pull that string. So uh, I think AI is an excellent resource to help support many businesses and in, in what they do and, and owners as well. Um, and in fact, in another session, we can talk about you know drip campaigns and things like that, which is content and how to use the market dominating position. How do you use um, campaigns as part of the buyer's journey and very quickly and easily with the, with things that uh, chat GPT and the others and like can provide that content that's very specific based on what you're trying to what you're trying to relay and what the market is is wanting to absorb it makes creating that content blogs things like that 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 support and elevate your business above others 
I, I think is just a really great resource and it will help um, you if you're if you if you've got the right core set will help you uh, expand and grow faster than other businesses out there. It definitely speeds up the content creation, but like I said, always be involved in there as a human and get in there and tweak it. So Jason, yes. you help small business owners navigate this, figuring out, you, you like have conversations with them. You even have some group coaching programs. Could you share with um, the viewers how they can reach out to you and have a conversation? Yeah, absolutely. So you can reach out to me at jason at profitandrevenuecoach.com. Uh, that's my email. That'll come directly to, to me and happy to have a conversation with, with anyone that's interested. Um, we can chat, uh, hop on a Zoom call. I can take you through some questions and, and, and interview you and understand your industry. And, and we can just go from there and see if I can help you. And if not, hopefully there's some good nuggets like today. Uh, this has been great. I hope we've provided some information that can help you and uh, grow your business. That's that's what we're here to do. Thank you, Jason. I, I'm really glad that you're here because I know your heart and your heart genuinely does really want to see people success, be successful with their efforts. And you've you've done this a number of times, build businesses and been successful with them. So it's great to have somebody like you in our corner. Thank you for being here. What is a tip or a thought that you would like to leave impressioned upon people's minds as they uh, walk away from this interview today? Yeah, th thank you again for having me, Michelle. I, I think the the core thing to to go back to and harp on is you got to get in the buyer's mind. You have to understand that the pro the problem that they have that they don't want, and the solution that they want and don't have, and how you are that resource that can provide it to them. So if you keep that in mind every time you're you're thinking about. Um, uh, the the prospect or even current customer as well. Um, it'll definitely help uh, your business grow and continue to grow. All right. So if you're watching this interview today and you would like to learn and grow alongside other innovative, but yet heart-centered entrepreneurs, we invite you to come join us at the techwithheartnetwork.com. We are a great innovative bunch that just meet together monthly and we're going to start doing more more and more events where we're going to be able to add more and more value to you as a business owner you can join our community for free or you can join as a gold member and get interviewed and get publicity and we can elevate you as an influencer within our community so if you are a thought leader or an expert in your industry and you have valuable insights that could really elevate and, and help a small business owner grow please reach out to us at techwithheartnetwork.com. We'd love to learn more about what you offer and who you are and meet you and then you know, decide how we can help others together, lead them, but with heart and with technology and systems and strategies. So thank you so much for tuning in today. Here is to your success. Your story needs to be seen and heard, and your brand needs to be revealed. Revealio elevates purpose-driven businesses into the spotlight through video storytelling, augmented reality video marketing, and professional website design. Get discovered online or in the news. Be featured in national magazines or host your own TV, podcast, or live radio show. Together, we make your brand come alive. All it takes is Revealio. Visit Revealio.com to get started today. Minority and service-disabled veteran-owned.